far. Anybody out there in Radio Land, we something and shift out of the way. <clears throat> And I could read it this time for whatever reason. Oh, I can. Either one. Eleven seventy six. I think these kinds of measurements really help in a crisis, such as the drought that's going on now, but also in the long term. What we can do is really understand how the groundwater uh, moves around in California, how it's recharged and how it's used. So in the long term, we'll really be able to uh, sustain this resource much better by these kinds of studies. This drought has actually caused people to pump a lot more water from the ground than they usually do. And so we're seeing the ground going down at an increasing clip. So we're actually seeing the ground going down over a couple of years as much as two feet. The main place we're seeing the ground going down is place uh, in southern San Joaquin Valley where uh, the farmers are pumping more water than usual because of the drought. So we're seeing the ground going down as much as two feet. So when you fly over the mountains, you can see snow down there and no snow over there, but you have no idea how deep the snow is or how fast it's melting. The Airborne Snow Observatory gives you the information on every patch of snow as to how deep it is and how fast it's melting. And that's key information for water managers, for ranchers, for farmers, for boaters. The list goes on and on. In the western U.S., we have the envy of the world in terms of our knowledge of our our water resources, but even then, it's very sparse information, whereas the Airborne Snow Observatory is providing a wall-to-wall -wall complete characterization regularly through the snowmelt season. So this is, this is the future of, of water management in snowmelt-fed regions. This is an exciting year for Earth Sciences within NASA. We have five launches next year, and three of them have bearing on the study of the water cycle of the planet. One is RapidScat, which measures winds over the ocean, which is important for measuring evaporation of moisture uh, off the ocean surface into the atmosphere. A second one is the Global Precipitation Mission, which is useful and used to measure precipitation over the planet. And the third one is the Soil Moisture Active Passive, mission, or SMAP, which is used to measure soil moisture over the terrestrial surface and then provide information on soil moisture for agricultural decision making and, and weather forecasting. What the, what the Mangelian Oscillation provides us is some information at a lead time longer than what we're used to for weather, but shorter than what we're used to from El Nino. So it fills a gap in what would otherwise be uh, information void at about two to four weeks in, in lead time in the future. The term atmospheric river was coined in the early to mid 90s and in the last five years we've 
found that these things are profoundly important, for example, to the west coast of the United States. They typically represent a flow of moisture from the tropics into the mid-latitudes. And what's important about that is when they make landfall, they produce a significant amount of precipitation. And for example, in California, most of the flooding events that we've had are associated with atmospheric rivers. Most droughts get busted by a series of atmospheric rivers. And about 30 to 40 percent of our water, available fresh water, occurs in just a handful of atmospheric rivers over the course of the winter.